Okay, welcome to another Orbiter video. And in this little series I'm putting together, we're trying out the checklist mission where you start off docked at the ISS and your goal is to transfer to the Mir space station and dock over there. The big challenge that this represents is that Mir and ISS are in extremely different orbits and it requires an enormous plane change to go from the ISS to the Mir. In the first part of the video, I tried this idea of uh, basically lowering one side of my orbit down into the atmosphere and, you know, atmospheric surfing to do some plane change. Uh, that was successful, uh, although I'm sure I didn't execute it correctly according to the way, you know, I would have done it many years ago. Um, one thing is that when you dip down to the atmosphere like that, there's definitely a point where you can't go any lower because you are going to overheat the vessel. Uh, since the Delta Glider, the standard Delta Glider, doesn't have temperature gauges or uh, an overheating system, we don't really have to worry about that. However, when you dip down too low into the atmosphere, it decays your orbit a lot, and it may reach a point, it probably reaches a point, where you decay your orbit so much that you may not be... Uh, getting any kind of net gain. It may actually, I, I could see it possibly costing you more to lower down into the atmosphere, you know, if you if you decay your orbit by too much. Uh, I don't have any way to compare, but um, we, we got about, I want to say somewhere around 25 to 30 degrees of plane change by doing that. And now I'm just going to do the rest of the plane change just with the traditional main engine burn. So with that said, Let's go ahead and switch camera views back over to the full screen and continue on. And once again, I have my heart rate monitor on just for fun, so you can see my heart rate. And like I said in the previous video, uh, my heart rate does tend to run a bit high because I'm often full of caffeine, but also I just have a lot of medications that affect with my, um, what do you call it, physiology. So we are 950 some seconds away from the node. So let's go ahead and uh, go into normal plus because AN equals AN and DN is the other one. So let's go to normal plus. And we'll turn off that autopilot and we'll get a bit closer. And I think it's gonna be when we're at 200 seconds, about 205, 206 seconds is when we're going to want to engage the main engines because it tells us that the amount of estimated thrust at the descending node is 411.6. Half of that number is, you know, 205, 206. So when the TN is about 205, 206, it's going to tell us to light up the engines. So that's what we'll do. So let's go ahead and warp time four, get closer to that point. All right, we're almost there. Uh, getting close anyway. So let's come out, come back to real time, go to normal plus, and we'll go ahead and use time warp to get the rest of the way there. And we'll come out of time warp here in just a moment. So at about 206 coming, so between 206 and 205, it should be time. <clears throat> okay, so now we're trying to complete the rest of our rest of our plane change or at least a good chunk of it just using the main engine and the Delta glider has still a lot of fuel in it so we might be able to uh, we, we probably have enough fuel to I'm sure we have enough fuel to do the entire plane change just using main engine whether or not we can do all of it in this one pass I'm not sure we'll find out uh, I will go ahead and warp time forward because this is a long burn and we can see our orbital, our APA and our PA, they are being affected. And this would be one reason why you would want to maybe not do such a huge burn at one point. You know, maybe do part of it here, come around here, do part, and go back and forth for a while. That way it doesn't perturb your uh, altitude so much. Okay, we'll come back to real time. Just a little bit more left on the burn and it's kind of made our orbit quite wonky. 
certainly more convenient to do it this way as opposed to the atmospheric surfing. All right, we're gonna go with that. Uh, we'll take care of the rest of it at the ascending node. So let's get rid of the ISS because, uh, let's go no target for now, because right now the ISS is just kind of messing up. Um, I chose the wrong, the same one. So the, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about the altitudes of Mir in a little bit. So when we get to PEA, we would like to bring down our apoapsis so we're closer to a circular orbit. So our PEA, our time to the periapsis is uh, 5,000 seconds away. The time to the ascending node is 1,800. So we'll take care of the rest of our plane change already at the, over at the ascending node. And we'll go ahead and go into the anti-normal position even though we could take care of it with uh, linear translation at wings level. And this is going to be a relatively short burn, um, about, about two seconds. Translation. So just kind of translating the rest of the difference there. Okay, so there we are. We are now in plane with Mir, but now our altitudes are much different. So let's get to let's get to the periapsis so that we can circularize our orbit. Alternatively, we could go up to apoapsis, circularize our orbit, plan on being above Mir and coming down. Usually I go the other way. Usually I'm below and go up. Um, in fact, let's do it the other way just to show we can. And since we're close to apoapsis anyway, bring up burn time calculator, go into the prograde position, and we'll circularize our orbit when we get to apoapsis. So time to ignition coming up. So we're almost there. And it's going to be, what, a two second burn, three second burn? Okay, so we brought up the other side of our orbit, so now we are completely above Mir on both sides. So now we just have to do everything that we normally do to rendezvous, with the difference being instead of uh, going up, we're going to be coming down, but all the other principles are the same. So let's bring up a map and pick a point in our orbit where we will plan to, to rendezvous. And we're going to make that basically as soon as we come into sunrise. Although, hmm, let me think about this. So we are lagging behind Mir. So it's going to take, since, since we're so close currently, it's going to take a whole bunch of orbits before we can rendezvous. So let's uh, let's go ahead and catch up, uh, technically fall behind for a, a bunch of orbits until we're in a position where, where we can come down. Because if I set my position now and then we orbit a bunch of times, we probably won't be uh, that, that position I chose won't matter anymore. So we're just going to orbit it for a while. So now we're about halfway across. So now we're... Okay, we can probably start making decisions now. Alright, so once we come around into sunrise, which is happening right now, we're going to go to the prograde position. And we're going to do a small uh, burn just to set this spot that we're at now. And we don't have the doors open. So this spot that we're at now will become our rendezvous point. 
So there's a difference here of about 20 kilometers, which is more than enough to uh, indicate some point in the orbit. So now we will bring, well, fast forward time until Mir is at this exact spot. And I want to know what is the altitude of Mir at that spot, because there is enough of a difference there that it will matter. So right here, we go down to dot one and out the altitude is uh, 301 exactly. So we will make our altitude at that spot 301 kilometers. So let's go around to our ship's uh, periapsis. And we're going to bring down our apoapsis to 301 exactly. So we're going to go retrograde for that. Warp time forward to get closer to that point. Okay, we're almost there. Turn the retrograde autopilot back on. Do a bit of 10x time warp to get closer to time of periapsis. And we'll begin, and we're bringing the apoapsis, which will actually then flip and be our periapsis to 301. Rotation translation. 301 kilometers exactly is what we're going for. Okay, so now we have uh, our plane aligned. We have a point over the Earth picked that will be in sunlight so that we can see what we're doing. Now we have the timing element to work out. And we'll do that with the sync orbit. So we'll target Mir. And we're planning to rendezvous at our ship's periapsis. We'll increase the orbit length to, I think it's 20 is the max that this displays. And we'll go ahead and start setting up our common nav. So control I to bring up that information. And we'll go to vessel mirror. The long range is 132.10. So we'll set that on number one. And nav two will set to just any free docking port. So 135 even is free. Okay, so we have our communications set up. Let's go ahead and go to docking, switch over to nav one, and it's not available yet, but we wouldn't expect that. We're still several orbits away. So for now, uh, let's just orbit and get closer to the rendezvous orbit, and then we'll work out our DT min at that time. So let's just orbit the Earth for a while. And probably on orbit two or three, we'll start fussing with the DT men. Tempted to go to 10,000, but I'm afraid I'll overshoot if I do. Okay, so let's go around again. Let's go around again after this. Okay, on this pass here, we'll go ahead and adjust our DT min. So let's go into the prograde position. And we're coming up to our rendezvous point in just a few seconds here, okay. So make sure we're in linear, we are. Okay, so a little bit of forward. We actually use it just a little bit of main engine because it'll just get us there a bit faster and then translation to get the rest of this. Control thrusters to bring it all the way down. Okay, so our DT min is zero. So in theory, we'll pass this point a couple orbits from now at the same time. But we will check that again on our next pass. So let's go ahead and warp time forward. And it doesn't look like our DT min has been perturbed. So we'll just go ahead and continue around. Uh, we should basically be done with sync orbit now. So let's bring up uh, docking on this side and press HUD to put that information up on the HUD. 
And again, I see nose cone, so that reminds me to open the nose cone now. And now we'll go ahead and warp time forward to get around to the rendezvous point. Okay, so we're 70 kilometers out. Let's get closer. We're 100 uh, meters per second relative velocity, but that's coming down. Let's go ahead and warp time forward. So you're really closing in now. Okay, so we're 20 kilometers away now. That's getting pretty close. Let's switch over to Nav 2, which shows us the docking, um, the actual port that we're going to dock to. Press HUD to put that information up on the HUD. Now I'm going to press F8 just so I can see out into space better. Rotation. And let's rotate over towards our target and have a look at it. Uh, which, to the extent that we'll be able to see it, which isn't much because we're still in the dark, but we should be coming into sunrise pretty soon. And we do have our retro doors open. Coming, in, coming into sunrise. Five, Five kilometers thousand. out. That's a bit more velocity, so I'm going to wait, uh, not wait too much longer. We'll say at four kilometers we'll start eliminating it. Four thousand. Okay, we'll start slowing things down now. Then when we're at three kilometers, we'll slow things down a bit more. Just a bit of time warp to speed that up. Three thousand. Okay, slow things down just a little bit more. Now we're down to 15 meters a second. And let's warp time forward till we're about a kilometer out. Two thousand. Getting close to that point, let's put our nose right on the velocity vector. And at one kilometer, we'll zero out. 1, there we are. Translation. Okay, and now we'll just translate the velocity vector into the corridor. Put it about right there. All right, let's go ahead and uh, just move our vessel over into the corridor. Don't need this up anymore. Nine, eight, and seven, six, and five hundred, four hundred. And let's see if we can just quickly dock. All right, let's rotation. switch over to rotation. Actually, let me just translate here a bit for a moment. Slow things down in that regard. Rotation. All right, now I'm going to uh, start rotating so I can see my target and so I can start bringing the X into the center of the of the bullseye. But before I do that, I want to uh, rotate uh, yaw the vessel around so I can see my target. A little bit of time warp to speed that up. And we'll keep rotating until the X is where we want it to be. So the X is more or less centered in that direction. So now we will pitch. And it looks like we're just a bit off in that direction. Okay, so we have our X lined up. Now we're not rotated correctly, so we can go ahead and take care of our rotation. Um, maybe I'm, I think I'm going to slow down the translation in that direction though. Translation. Okay. And now, and I'm also going to start translating a bit forward. And now let's rotate um, clockwise. Rotation. just so that we can get our triangle facing up. A little bit of time warp on that. Okay, so our X is centered, our triangle's up, so now we just need to translate up and forward, and then we can duck. 
except we have to remember to switch modes. Translation. Translate up, translate forward. I'm going to put in a couple meters of forward translation because we have a distance of 350 to go. And a bit of time warp. 300. 200. Okay, we're getting closer to where we want to be, so let's slow down the time warp. I'm going to also take out some of that forward translation because we're getting a bit closer now. So this is about the, what, the third or fourth time I've done this in the last few days, so I'm definitely starting to feel more comfortable with, all, with everything now. Nowhere near where I was, you know, a few years back, but, you know, it's, it's all coming back to me. So let's uh, start moving forward. 100. Take out some of that forward. 75. And now we'll just be a bit patient. Rather than trying to use time warp, I don't want to mess stuff up at the last, you know, at the last uh, moment. bit of time warp 50, right after saying I wasn't going to do it. 40. Okay. So when we get a little bit closer, I'm going to eliminate some of that forward translation. How's my heart rate? All right, still normal. 20. Let's take out some forward translation, slow things down a little bit. But pretty soon I think I'll be ready to turn on non-spherical gravity sources again. Knock on wood. So it looks like we need to go just a touch down. Nine. Eight. Take out maybe just a bit more forward. Seven. Six. So we need to translate just a bit to the right. Five. Four. Take out a bit more forward. So we have a nice Three. delicate touch. <clears throat> Two. Looks like we need to translate just a bit up. One. Contact. And there it is. Transfer from... Ship is docked. Transfer from ISS to Mir. A um, bit of an awkward way of getting here by dipping down into the atmosphere. And again, I don't really think I did that quite right. Not that there's necessarily a right way to do something as unrealistic as that, but there's a more efficient way to do it at least, I'm sure. So with all that said, let's go ahead and switch cameras to the overview. And if you like this little mini series, hit the like button and I will see you in the next video, if there is one.